Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I'm going to open today by asking you a question. When was the last time you painted something just because you wanted to? Not because it belonged in an army, not because it was part of an ongoing project or something that you needed for whatever reason, but because you saw the model and thought, I'd like to have that. Now it's a little bit different when you've got the opportunity to just print things, but I remember once upon a time going and getting a white king of all things and painting that for fun. And that's the spirit with which I've approached today's miniature. This is one of these scavenger bikers available from Station Forge. Um, I picked this one up from my mini factory and it came off of my Alagoo Mars 2 Pro. It is a very cool little biker. The set is insane. There are so many options in there. I will make sure to link to that in the description. Now today's methods are all fairly simple because I wanted to do something quick and satisfying and easy. And I think you can see it's a little rougher, shall we say, than some of my recent stuff, but that's deliberate. And hopefully you'll get some ideas on how you can shave a few minutes off your own painting jobs if that's what you want to do too. So as always, all of the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the recipe for the base. Let's get started. Now, once he's all assembled, the very first thing I've done is to hit him with a primer spray of matte black from the Army Painter. And you'll see it makes it quite difficult to actually see what we're doing on camera. But not to worry, the very first thing we're going to do after that is to hit him with an all over kind of a wash. I've got here some Rhinox Hide and I've watered it down in a little well, about five parts water to one part paint. Don't worry about your ratios, it honestly does not matter. What I'm going to do is basically bathe the entire miniature in this, kind of like it was Agrax Earthshade or something. Really work it into the recesses. And when this dries, like it, it looks dreadful going on. It looks absolutely awful. But when it dries, what you're going to get is just this little hint of warmth, particularly in the recesses where it catches. So it's not going to be particularly useful everywhere. But in some areas where we might struggle to reach with a dry brush or another color later on, this is going to work really well to give us some shading right back there. And yeah, you cannot put too much of this on. You can't really go wrong with it. Back in the day, we used to do this with old uh, Scorch Brown, if you remember that one. Beautiful color. But yeah, Rhinox Hide is what I'm using. Um, Dryad Bark would also work perfectly well. Just soak your dude in a nice thin mix. Now that will take a little bit of time to dry, but when it does, you get this very subtle brown tint in all of the recesses. Uh, up on the back of his pack here is probably the easiest place to see that, but it does change it up just a little from flat black, and that's quite nice for what I've got in mind. Now what I'm going to turn to is actually plate mail metal from the Army Painter, rather than one of the uh, Citadel metallic colors. Reason being, I tend to find that the Metallic grains in the Army Painter stuff are just a little more prominent. It's really hard to explain, but if you ever do get the chance to play around with them, I think you'll notice a difference. So I'm not too worried if I get quite a heavy overbrush with this. Uh, you'll see I'm getting quite a lot left behind on the handlebars there, but that is fine. All I really want is to avoid the recesses and leave that cool brown shading intact. If I don't, I'm not too worried. So I'm going to dry brush pretty much everything. The only thing I'm really going to avoid is his cape and the leather packs on the back of his uh, bike here. But otherwise, you'll see I'm just chucking it on. After a couple of passes around your bike and your uh, rider, you're going to get this finish. And hopefully you'll see what I mean about it having a slightly coarser finish. Um, I really like it. I think that works quite well, and it's going to really suit the grimy metal finish that I want. But I do want some highlights in some areas. So I have a little Necron compound, and I'm just going to pass a few times, mostly brushing down or across to catch the very high points of some of the metal details. So legs, arms and such, and we'll make those shine a little bit more. Now we do want to brighten up the hull of the bike. I'm calling it a hull is probably not quite the right word, but I had some more gas bone. And this is going to help us with that Mars beige that we want. So you'll see this goes on fairly well, like it is going over a very dark color. 
but we do get some streaking. So we'll let this coat dry and apply a second. At the moment I'm using my medium base brush, but I am going to switch on down to a smaller one to get into some of these harder to reach areas. If you're finding it difficult to get a smooth coat with your Morgas bone, make sure that you are letting the coat underneath dry properly before you apply the next one. Otherwise you're going to lift up that gunk underneath and you're going to get a horrible sludgy mess. A little bit of patience there will pay dividends. I'm going to turn now to a few Vallejo colors and I will include the names of them that are the nearest Citadel equivalents in the description. Uh, the reason why I'm using these is ordinarily because the coverage is much better. So I'm using here flat brown and I'm going to paint in all of the leather stuff. You see this goes on very quickly and that's what I'm interested in at the moment. I want to save some time with this stuff. I might do something different with the saddle actually. I'm not sure about that being the same brown as everything else, but with keeping things simple in mind, I might just resist that urge and leave it brown. We'll see. I've got now flat red and this is very similar to Mephiston Red. Sorry, just pausing as I <laughs> get close to edges there. But as always, this one's just a little different. I tend to find Flat Red is a little bit less saturated than Mephiston Red, and that's kind of what I want. I do have a couple of little stray spots of red where I really do not want stray spots of red. Uh, but as always, save your cleanup to your last stage. I've got now some German grey and I'm going to apply this to the wheels. And I'm also going to paint in his little trousery leggy bits up the top here. This goes on with a slight sort of blue tint to it, but it will darken down once it dries. Next up we'll grab some Retributor armor and I'm going to pick a few places that I want to be kind of a brassy color once we shade them. Now it's very possible to go pretty quickly overboard with this. So I'm going to try and stick to places. Ah, I don't know. I might look for a little inspiration online somewhere. Maybe this trim. Yeah, that would look cool. And a couple of bits on the backpack. Now you'll see in some spots, like up on his shoulder there, I've made a right pig's ear of those highlights. And that's because I knew I was going to come back straight away and basically tidy those up. What I have is a little corn red. And I, ordinarily I probably wouldn't do this, but what I want is some nice deep red armor panels just to break up some of all of the silver that this dude is covered in. And yeah, I think corn red is going to be the right choice for that. So I'm just going to paint in a couple of panels. The ones that I've lined in gold, basically. Now real quick, as well as the armor panels on the rider himself, you'll probably notice I did change the color of the central of the gas tank. Um, I think that looks better in red. You know, retrospect, I probably should have done that from the outset, but I like how it breaks up the shape of the bike. I've also gone in and I have used my German gray on the handlebars just to break up that a little bit as well. And the last color I'm going to apply, this is beige brown. Uh, this is another wonderful Vallejo color. Let me just get the right. <laughs> I'm throwing them around on screen here. Um, I'm going to paint in just a little section of the pistol to look like wood. So the grip and part of the uh, worky gubbins itself. Now, once I've done this, what I'm going to do is go around, uh, grab my plate mail metal again and tidy up those uh, metal bits that I mentioned making a mess of and any other cleanup that I need to do. And once you're satisfied that that cleanup is finished, it's time to grab your Agrax Earthshade, give it a really good shake, and we're going to apply this fairly generously over the entire miniature with a nice big brush. Don't worry about you know, being delicate with this, taking your time, really knock it on there, and just make sure that you are getting it into any gaps, nooks and crannies. I'm going to give this a pretty generous bath, and then I'm going to leave them probably 30 to 40 minutes Quite a big miniature, it'll probably take a little bit longer to dry. But yeah, let's come back and have a look at that once that stage is done. And even though you can see that's not completely dry yet, I did use quite a bit of shade after all, that's looking pretty good. I always say the difference a shade makes, just brilliant. Now what I'm going to do, ordinarily this is where I'd crack out the detail brush and start painstakingly highlighting this dude. 
But that has been moving a little away from what I wanted to do with the channel in the first place, which is to show you some really quick ways of getting stuff on the table. So I'm going to bust out instead the dry brushes. So what I've got here, this is one of my little makeup brushes. It's about the same size as a Citadel small dry brush. And I have some Troll Slayer Orange. Now I'm just going to flick along the edge of my base here to make sure I haven't got too much. And that looks about right. And you might point out, well, this is not a, this is not a dry paint. So, well, yeah, but back in the day when I were a lad, as I'm fond of saying recently, uh, there was no such thing as dry paints. It was all just paint. So I'm going to very lightly flick along these raised areas of detail with my bright orange paint. It's a little difficult to get this on camera, unfortunately, just because of the angle. But if I go over that a few times, you see we build up the color, and get a nice transition and a highlight there. So I'm going to make a couple of passes around all of the red very carefully in some places. Like for example, on his hood, I can still do this right at the edge of his hood, but take your time. And yeah, dry brushing is one of those things. Definitely have a practice with it. Now you'll see from the side, and if I turn them to the front here, that's not looking too bad. Is it perfect? No, but we're not interested in perfect. We're interested in done, and that's going to work just fine. I did get in the front here where his little uh, bandana around his neck is, and I did use a medium layer brush just to splatter in some of that Troll Slayer orange where I couldn't reach with the dry brush. But that's none too fancy. That's just a color match. The other highlights are done. So while there isn't very much of this, I'm going to dry brush the white stuff at the front of the bike with a little bit of Tyrant Skull. And you can be quite generous with this because it's only going to lighten it up and look a little rougher. And I quite like that finish. And then the same as with the red, if there's any areas you're going to struggle to reach with the dry brush, a little bit of a shanty bone will work for a highlight in those areas. Now the last color I think is really going to benefit from a nice quick dry brush is going to be the leather. So I've got here Golgfag Brown, which I always forget that second G. It always comes out as Golfag when I first try and say it. So what you're hearing is the end result of a repeated attempt to get a simple word out. But as you see, this picks up very quickly. And same as with the other colors, if you need to, Mournfang Brown works quite well as a replacement for the dry brush. So I'm going to use a little bit of Mournfang Brown up around. Oh no, I can't get the brush in there. Never mind. Well, after a couple of passes with our Golgfag Brown, and now that I can say it, I'm just enjoying doing it. <laughs> this is what you'll have. And honestly, you can put them on the table like that, surely. But of course, we can always go a little bit further, and this is not going to take a huge amount of extra work. So I have some Calador Sky, and I am going to paint in the lamps on the front of the bike. Now, once you've got a solid base coat, I've mixed in a little bit of white to that blue. Uh, you could just as easily use Calgar blue or maybe Fenrisian blue here. Or is it Fenrisian gray? It doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is paint kind of a half moon shape. Starting, oh, that might have a little too much water in it. Never mind. Just like that. And the beautiful thing is, if I splurge too far into the the lamp, it doesn't matter. I can just go straight back over with some pure Calador Sky again. You'll see straight away that's not the shape that that moon was. I've gone back and I have tidied it up. So it's very easy to do. Don't worry about those first layers. While I've got that little bit of white out, let's go ahead and pop a tiny wee dot into the corners of each corner, he says, talking about a, a spherical thing. One dot in the bottom, and then for the hint of reflection, we're going to go ahead and put two small dots up in the other side. That will look quite simple for now, but when we varnish it, I'm going to come back and put a gloss over these, and they will look fantastic. And while I still have that white on my palette, you know what? I am going to get myself a nice small brush. And I'm going to tempt fate here. I'm going to try and dot in just a little bit of white right in the center. I'm going to mess it up. Never mind. <laughs> now I managed to fix that by getting a little bit of the German gray still on my palette and just splodging it over the edge of the eye socket. 
and then getting some plate mail metal and doing the edges of the thing. So not too hard to fix up if you do have tricky hands like I do. I've got now some ethermatic blue, and this is not a particularly strong blue color, but it's a wonderful sort of plasma glow. So I have it for lots of things. And we'll just dot it into our eye sockets, like so. There is one last area where I want to add just a little more in the way of highlighting, and that is on the gold areas. So I have some Liberator Gold, and I am going to hmm, just dot in a few little areas at the edges of some of these gold areas so that they look a bit shinier. I notice I've said area a few times there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm not going to go nuts with this, just at corners. That'll be enough to brighten this up. What I'm going to do then is take them outside, hit them with a matte varnish, except of course for the lenses that I'm going to come back and hit with some Ard Coat. And yeah, once he's got his base applied and all that fun stuff, let's get a look at what this fella looks like when he is all finished. And there at last, our scavenger biker is complete. Now I haven't painted anything for my Mechanicus army in a while, and it's Kind of tempting to just go ahead and print off another couple of these. These are really cool. I thoroughly enjoy just doing something for the sake of painting a cool model. And while there's a ton of different things you could do to this, you know, you could spend a lot more time and make it look really smashing. Honestly, it was fun to just get this out and wiggle a brush around. <laughs> it doesn't have to be fine art just because you want to paint a miniature. So thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment as well as all the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kari Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support lets me carry on doing fun stuff like this. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.